If you ask people to show up every day and you don't tell them what we're building, why it matters and where it's going, you are really hurting that person's mental health. Helping business leaders grow themselves, their team, and their profits. This is Entree Leadership. Now, here's your host, Ken Coleman. Coming to you from the Music City, this is the broadcast of leaders, by leaders, for leaders. Thank you so much for joining the conversation. Our feature conversation this episode is with Donald Miller, a good friend of ours, been on the program many times. We're going to talk specifically with Donald this time about mission statements and core values. How do they coexist? And then I'm excited to introduce you to Dave and Carrie Way, who are going to share their story. What did they do when Dave's father, who is essentially the mission, not just the mission statement, when he passed away? How did they handle that transition specifically with the mission statement and core values when the very soul of the organization passed away? You're going to love this very practical stuff. And then we got a great resource for you from our friends at Belay. It all happens right now. Let's get to it. Donald Miller is an author, best-selling author, speaker, now the CEO of StoryBrand, a company that is helping tons of businesses clarify their messages. This conversation is as ground-level practical as it gets. Here it is, my conversation with Donald Miller. All right, this is fun. Many times, Donald Miller's been our guest. Now you're in studio. I think yeah. it's first time in the studio. Am I right? Or is this second close. time? Second, I think. Second? Yeah. See, I don't even remember. You've been on so much. But it much. was different. You guys have cleaned it up. Oh, we have? Looks great. Well, that's good. We probably had Stacy come in and say, Ken, let's go. Let's tidy up a little bit. <laughs> but uh, good to have you here. We're going to talk about several different topics. But one that I'm excited about diving into is it's corporate speak. Yeah. I think when I say it, everybody conjures up pretty clear image of what this means, but I think you have some very clear and strong opinions on what it really should mean. Let's talk about this idea, core values. Core values. We actually take them serious at Ramsey Solutions. Yeah, you've got them everywhere, which is what you need to do. You need to paint them on your walls. Let's talk. What should a core value look like, sound like, act like? Well, I want to back up a little bit because core values are actually tied to your mission statement. And so let's talk first about the mission statement. I'm not a big believer in the mission statement as it is printed most of the time. Which it, is what? Give me an oh, example. Oh, it's a bunch of, uh, you know, we exist to increase the efficiency of the, you know, business speak, blah, blah, blah. Right, right. I was in a boardroom recently in an architecture firm in downtown Nashville. And we were talking just the C-suite. I mean, these are the executives and it's a sky rise in downtown Nashville. I said, well, you got to, you know, if, if you want to unify your team, you're going to have to clarify your message. You're going to have to have some sort of story that people can live into. And the CEO said, Don, we spent 48 hours at a retreat recently. We came up with our mission statement. We've got it. That's our guiding principle. It's painted on the outside of the wall of this conference room. So we've got that covered. And I said, I didn't, I wasn't at the retreat. I don't know what their mission statement is. I said, your mission statement is not going to work. Probably kind of a bold thing to say, but I believed it. And he said, no, it is. I mean, everybody in this room, we did 48 hours coming up with our mission statement. And I said, okay, don't say anything else. Don't say anything. And I pointed at the CFO, and I said, what's the mission statement? And he didn't know. Oh, boy. He was at the retreat. Of course. And it's painted on the outside of the wall. Right. Why? Because it's a bunch of business speak nobody remembers. Right. And then even if they can remember it, you gather your entire team, you stand around the mission statement, you read it on the side of the wall. like a, Nobody remembers it the next day. And not only that, if they could remember it, they wouldn't know how to take action on it. Mm-hmm. And so what we really need in our mission statement of core values, the, the first thing is we need very simple language. And here's the other thing that you need. Instead of stating your mission statement, right, invite people into a story. And so I turned around, I looked at the city of Nashville. You're looking out at the skyline. And I said, think about something like this. You're an architectural firm. What if your mission statement were the average urban infrastructure causes a low level of anxiety in most people? We exist to design buildings that give people a sense of peace that they want to walk into and feel comfortable working in. Yeah, I was just making something up, right? That's a story. It's a problem that is causing people pain that we as a company fix in order to release them from their pain and have a happy life. So if you actually put that on your wall and you talk about that as a team, I could probably go to any of your team members. If you've talked to them about it maybe four or five times, brought it up at every keynote, there's another thing. Once you get the stuff out, you have to repeat it. You have to do a propaganda campaign mm-hmm. to get people to memorize yeah, that's it. That's right. But then I actually go to a team member. I say, hey, why do you guys exist? And he would turn around and say, well, you know, most urban skylines create a low level of anxiety, and we want to ease that 
with the kind of uh, buildings that we build, good sense of peace and you know, whatever. They're going to stammer around it. But then the other thing that that does, one, it, it gives me a sense of mission. You know, that's what you want, right? The mission statement instills right. a sense of mission. That's right. When most people's mission statements instill a sense of confusion. Yes. And so on and so on. So we want it to be extremely memorable, one, and we want it to invite people into a story and instill a sense of mission or passion into their work life. That's not just good for the bottom line. It's incredibly good for the bottom line. It's good for our people's mental health. Mm. When somebody wakes up, Viktor Frankl's work, you know, he's the Viennese psychologist. When somebody wakes up and has a sense of that they need to get out of bed yep. in order to solve somebody else's problem, it gives them a deep sense of meaning, purpose, agency in their mm -hmm. life, which is associated with yeah. mental health. Yeah. So our mission statement is incredibly important, and it cannot be vague, and it should not include business speak. Let me just give you some practical advice. Not only do we have a mission statement as a company, we train the world's greatest business leaders is our mission statement. That's pretty easy to understand. We train the world's greatest business leaders, right? I know what we do, mm -hmm. but each department has a mission statement. So we just created a department called the hospitality team. And the hospitality team exists to give gifts to people, to make sure that our workshops and conferences are very memorable. We found a guy who's paid $3,000 to come to our last workshop sleeping in his car. Wow. And we said, on it, right? Hotel room, $500 in cash. Yeah. We're so glad you're here. That guy is going to win, by the way. If you are He's spending hungry. your last dollar to grow yourself, I <laughs> bet right. on you. That's right. But, you know, we said, we don't want your money, right? Right. That's the hospitality team. So we created the hospitality team largely out of that story. Mm -hmm. I sh you know, Avery comes back to me with a mission statement, and it's this business jargon. And I emailed her today and said, what if it's just the hospitality team exists to help people love and remember their experience with StoryBrand. Well, now instead of create efficiency through productivity and blah, blah, right. blah, anybody who's on the hospitality team knows their job. Yeah. And I'm talking to a customer, and I know my job is to help them love this experience and remember it forever. Mm. And I will do anything it takes to help them love this experience and remember it forever. That's why street language is so important and instills a sense of mission rather than a sense of confusion. It starts with the mission statement. Yeah. Well, let's stay there for a second. When you tell Avery, maybe it's something like this. I hear that and I hear it's clear, it's easy to understand, but it also has a certain amount of lack of boundaries to it. Yeah, it's good. It, is that intentional? Because now she gets to decide, every teammate on that team decides, wait a second, hmm, here's the situation. Um, we're supposed to love and create, you know, and so they yep. start running it and they go, well, what, is, what does that and now look everybody's like? wondering about budgets, right? And how much these people are gonna spend and can you, well, one thing that you always have to balance is you have to empower your people. Mm. I just talked to Horace Schultz, co-founder of the Ritz Carlton. Yes. He empowered every single person, every, from the janitor at the Ritz, to the, whoever's the executive running that particular property. Every single person can spend $2,000 of corporate money on any customer to make them happy. He empowered the entire team. Yes, You can spend, your limit is $2,000. Right. Of course, Ritz has been wildly successful, sure. one of the most iconic brands in the world. You gotta empower your people. Yeah. So I would know, and Avery and I had this conversation, look, you know, if overhead creeps up, and you know what I call the engines on the airplane, the thing that brings in the money yeah. shrinks down, we have to defund this department. You know, you teach people to think that way and they you can trust right. them. Well, and to your point here, even though I, I'd be curious to know, did you talk to Schultz about how many times, or at least a ballpark, how many times an employee actually spent the full 2000 We didn't, but I can't imagine it was very often. I don't think so. Yeah. It might have been a $100 solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, or a comp a night, you know, yeah, or comp a meal, whatever is. it takes. Yeah, yeah interesting. All right, so you say that, this is a pretty bold statement, we should only have three core values? Yes, that's actually from Ken Blanchard. It's a paper that he wrote, it's a lot of his stuff, but right, sure. you and I geek out on politics. Ken wrote a, a white paper on how to turn around the American government. He wrote about five years ago. I actually flew out to San Diego and got I gotta the interview read on film. This. We went through the entire white paper <laughs> and I asked him questions, because he's 83 now. Well, yeah, he's a legend. And, and I want this to live forever. Oh, that's great. But in that white paper, he talks, he repeats some things that he says about organizations. He says, one, people can't remember much more than three or four. Yep. And so here's a neat thing I did. When we realized we suffered from this problem, we had seven or eight core values, You know, they were vague business language, those kinds of things. I decided we're gonna shrink it to three. But we're actually gonna film a little documentary about redoing our mission statement and core values. So when we had our first meeting to talk about this, I actually had our camera guy come and I said, hey, pull people out of the room one at a time and ask them what our core value is on camera. 
And one of our team members was able to say one of our core values. That's it. <laughs> that's right. But, you know, that's how that's hard great. it is. Well, sure. So imagine, imagine one, not having a mission statement and not having core values, right? That would be like me calling you saying, hey, Ken, you want to go on a road trip with me? What's the first question you ask? Yeah, where are we going? It's exactly what yeah. your team is doing. Yeah. You're saying, let's go. Yeah. And they're going, where? <laughs> That's exactly right. And when your mission That's statement exactly is, right. we exist to be more productive and provide efficient solutions to yeah. innovative problems. Right. That yeah, they're It's going, like a dog chasing his tail. Yeah. Well, it's like this. It's like, Ken, let's go on a road trip. Don, where? To a place where the sun is good mm. and the air yes. is temperate. Yes. And you're going, where? Exactly. <laughs> right? Right. That's exactly what we're yeah. doing to our teams. And not unlike the whole Viktor Frankl thing, if you don't, they wake up in the morning, they have a problem they're solving for other people is mm -hmm. akin to mental health. It's associated with mental health. If you ask people to show up every day yeah. and you don't tell them what we're building, why it matters and where it's going, you are really hurting that person's mental health. They have to sit there for eight hours and work for absolutely no reason. Right. You take somebody and you say, listen, I'm going to give you $85,000 this year. Say they, the most they've ever made is thirty. dollars I'm going to give you $85,000 this year. Here's what we do. Why don't you take this pallet of bricks and build a brick wall on that side of the parking lot. When you're done, I want you to chisel that brick wall down yeah. and build it on this side of the parking lot. When you're done, I want you to chisel that down and That's build right. it back where it used to be. You're going to do that for a year, yeah. and I'm going to give you eighty five grand. Yeah. They'll last a month. Absolutely. That's what they did in concentration camps. It, it's awful. I mean, this is a it's fact. This awful is a thing form to do of to torture. People. Yeah. Yeah. So we, you know, we got to get our mission statement right. That's yeah. the negative. The positive is when you actually get the mission statement and core values right, mm -hmm. you motivate, inspire a team, you unify a team, and you immediately increase productivity and efficiency. It is the cheapest thing you can do to increase the efficiency and become a lean machine right. is mission statement and core values. So that's the importance of the mission statement. Absolutely. Mission statement is the plot of the story yeah. that you are inviting people into. Where we are going... Why does it matter? What's my role? These are three key questions that you say you've got to be able yeah. for someone to simply understand the answers to those questions yeah. within the core values and the mission statement, how they right. work together. That's right. So your mission statement and core values work together to answer three questions that every employee has. Yep. And that is, where are we going? Yep. Why does it matter? And what's my role? Right. So mission statement is, where are we going? And probably why it matters. It's mm. going to answer both of those. That's right. And so after that, it's core values, which is what's my role. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is an umbrella version of what's my role. What's my role needs to get down into what am I supposed to do today? Right. But in the core values really are how am I supposed to behave? Mm -hmm. And so if I hire an actor, if I'm a director of a movie and I hire an actor and I don't give them a script and I don't tell them what this character is about, what they're like, who they're supposed to be, that's a form of torture also because we say action and they don't know what to do, mm -hmm. right? They can't wing it. They need to know what this thing is about. What mm -hmm. am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to behave? Those core values are incredibly important. They should be actionable. So mm -hmm. we exist to train the world's greatest business leaders. Now, how are we going to do that? There are three core values. Mm -hmm. One is be the guide. And what we mean by be the guide is in everything that you do, help the customer win, mm -hmm. period. Help them win. Find out what their finish line is and get them there. Help them get there. Second is be ambitious. So we want to always say, you know, we're here to win. I mean, we're here to win a Super Bowl. And third is be positive. That's about it. I mean, I could add a fourth, and believe me, I want to, right? There's so many great core values I want to add. They won't remember the fourth. Remember the problem I had at the beginning of the oh, year? Sure. They don't remember them. Like, right. I've got it on video. It's mm -hmm. hilarious. So they're going to remember be the guide, be ambitious, and be positive. And they're actually in rank order. So they cancel each other out. They can cancel each other out. If I'm trying to help a customer win, right? But that customer, you know, is they paid three thousand dollars to be at my workshop. They're sleeping in their car. They have, well, the ambitious side of me would say, you know, I don't want to comp their hotel room or give them some cash because that's not going to help us win. But the ambition comes second to be the guide. So if I say my main ambition is to help this guy win. My second one is to be ambitious. Then I have to say, you know what? Helping this person win cancels out my ambition. I need to slow down yep. and help them win. That's the most important one. And then the third is be positive. And we actually say, you know, there's a sentence behind each of these, be positive. We say in almost every situation, we see the bright side. Mm -hmm. And I put the word almost in because if a tree falls on top of the office, I don't want somebody walking in going, sunlight, yeah. right? <laughs> 
That's a good point. There are certain reasons. Yeah. So they have to be in rank order. You know, Ken Blanchard talks about Disney Parks core values mm -hmm. and their their first core value is safety yep. right and then they have uh courtesy so if i'm being courteous to a customer and i hear somebody screaming i need to stop being courteous to this customer and go with the primary value of safety so really your core values are informing how people should live mm -hmm. within the workplace they're incredibly important yeah I want to touch on something, and then we'll move on, but I want to touch on what I think is a reality, and that's some people struggling with looking at their business. We have a lot of small business owners, yep. as you know. You know our audience well. So let's just pick plumber, electrician, or some type of trade, okay? Now, you and I can sit there and come up with eight reasons why that company matters yep. tremendously. Yes. But I think some small businessmen and women, they have a struggle going as the leader, as maybe the owner— how does this matter that much? Nobody really brags on us. Nobody talks about us. We sell windows or whatever it is. How do they overcome this idea that, well, it, I'm having a hard time coming up with why what everybody else is doing matters so much? Well, you know, let's talk about just a mission statement for a plumber. Mission statement for a plumber might be, we, you know, I don't know, we help fix people's pipes or whatever. But I would actually come with something much better than that. I would say we fix people's plumbing and ease the tension of having a stranger in their home. Yeah. You see what I just, that, yeah. that actually motivates yeah. very different behavior. Yes. Our dishwasher went out two days ago and we called six different plumbers. None of them could get to it till Monday. My mm -hmm. sister is visiting town. We got dishes piling up. I think we have 10 people coming over for dinner tonight, all family. Yep. And uh, we need a dishwasher. So my assistant, who's a miracle worker, found somebody. 65-year-old man comes into our house, and my wife immediately falls in love with this guy. Right. He's the sweetest, sure. nicest guy. He says, look, it's actually, he's brutally honest. He says, this is a $3 part that they're charging us about $250 for, and I have to mark it up. You can actually get a new dishwasher for about $200 more than what I'm charging you. We can have it installed. It's 500 bucks to fix this. And I just want to be brutally honest. It's actually a $3 problem that because this, this, this is what we have to charge. He's brutally yeah, honest. Sure. And my wife said, I'll get the checkbook, you know, because I don't want this being in a landfill. Yeah. You're telling me it's going to last another five years right. and it would cost me another $200 to replace it. And of we don't course. have a dishwasher. Yeah. And he said, well, I just wanted you to know everything that we know. Right. You think we're calling him again? Absolutely. I'm and telling everybody and, and telling the story you just shared. Entree leadership. That's right. And now, I don't know what their core values are, but my guess is right. one of them in that culture right. is honesty. That's right. They are honest with the customer. They That's consider right. them partners yeah. in solving their plumbing problems. Yeah. And we'll, well go the with them again the point you're making again. here is we had a similar story. Big giant planter falls off the front of the house <laughs> in the middle of winter, rips off five pieces of siding. My house is exposed. Can't get anybody out there. Yeah. Find a contractor. Guy comes out, makes a point to get it all taken care of quickly. Yeah. yeah. He's my wife's favorite guy on the planet, <laughs> above me. Yeah, yeah. Several, I, I almost, yeah. Several levels above yeah, I me. I got a little jealous of this guy, 65-year-old guy fixing our dishwasher, too. Yeah, yeah exactly right. Yeah. And, and so that's the point is if you're trying to figure out all this romantic language, don't forget what you've taught me. And that's why yeah. I set you up to answer the question. You're meeting a need. It's peace of mind. Yes. What that guy did on my siding thing was not fix something ugly. My neighbors know me. They know we're not the Clampets. Yeah. They know I'm going to fix it. Yeah. It was peace of mind about weathering. Is it going to water going to get in down and cause a ten thousand dollar problem? Yeah, this is what I'm worried about. You're solving the problem that is not the problem you're solving. You're solving the emotions that come with the problem that you're solving. Preach it. That's and so it. So when you understand that, that's it. And you instill that into your core values. Yeah. You provide direction. You create a team alignment, and unity. You give people mental health, and you add value to your products. Mm. And that value makes your products worth more. It makes people enjoy them more, talk about them more. Here's the great thing about mission statement and core values: it is completely free to create it yes. and to instill it. Absolutely. I mean, it's gonna cost you some paint on the side of a wall, maybe a couple T-shirts, yeah. a hat, right? Coffee mug, yeah. whatever, and it will direct your entire team. Okay. One more follow-up. Yes. One thing we hear from our tribe, yeah. people that are in this trade business specifically, it's hard to find good help. Yeah. If they don't like me, they don't like my the way we do things, I can go work for somebody else. It's hard to find good people. Yeah. Let me ask you, based on what you just said, yes. when you instill these core values and a tradesman looks at himself as not just a plumber or not just a carpenter or whatever it is, an electrician, but they align with what you're telling them 
and they go, wait a second, I've never worked for somebody where I now see myself totally different. Doesn't that lend itself to not just keeping that talent, but attracting other tradesmen? Because they go, this is this is missional for me. I'm yes. not just a tradesman. Yes. Mark Miller at Chick-fil-A, who you know. Oh, yeah. Mark's a great guy. Chick-fil-A spent, every year they identify their number one problem, and they create a piece of curriculum around that problem. Their number one problem, you know, this last year was attracting and retaining top talent. Mm. So they spent millions. Oh, they went yeah. to Strength Finders. They hadn't done research. Gallup has not done research. Nobody had done research. Nobody had ever done research on how to attract top talent. They spent millions of dollars trying to figure out how to do it. And they came up with three things that top talent look for. A better boss, a brighter future, and a bigger vision. A better boss, a brighter future, and a bigger vision. Wow. So where does your mission statement? Two things, a brighter future that's right. and a bigger vision. No I can't question. help you with your better boss. You, that's that's right. you and me. We yeah. just have to be better people. That's right. And we're part that's of the right. talent magnet, right? So right now, StoryBrand is blowing up. And I'm discovering that, yes, I have to pay people well. I have to pay them a pretty good salary. And we want to keep that going. And those are all percentages. You're trying to figure that stuff out. But when I heard Mark say that, which was weeks ago, months ago, really, I said, okay, well, I can definitely offer them a better boss, a bigger vision, and a brighter future. And so I sit down with our mission statement and say, look, in 48 months, our mission statement is going to be you know, something akin to the American workforce is not being developed. That's unfair. And we're going to give everybody a cost-effective way to develop their people. We will develop the entire American workforce. When I say that to right now, I'm recruiting a guy who's a major player in an NFL team. I want him on my team. Mm -hmm. He's not a player. I'm sorry. He's not a physical yeah, player. He's a part of the organization. He's, an, he's yeah. a part of the organization. I'm recruiting him. He flies into town next week. I don't think without that mission statement and that understanding of we're doing something yes. to change the world. That's right. I don't think he's even returning my phone calls. Yeah. Another guy from a prominent family is a CEO of a big organization debating leaving his state because he could easily run for governor. He's now very interested in coming on staff at StoryBrand. Why? Because we have this sense of mission. Yes. And so it's it's not only unifying your team and giving people mental health, your mission statement, if it's done right, if you write some lousy, we exist to create productive, innovative artisan solutions to, yeah. you're not going to attract anybody. Right. I don't know what that means. Yeah. But give me a mission. We're going to go over that hill. That's right. We're going to take those guys down because they've been terrorizing this village. That's right. And I need your help. Yeah. And they'll come. Uh, right. One of our development guys took a $50,000 pay cut to leave his company and come to our company. You know, development guys are really expensive. Oh, yeah. And, he's, and supposedly he's the best in town. He came. I didn't fully realize that. I got two calls saying I offered him $100,000 more than he was making. You offered him $50,000 less than what he was making, and he went with you. I got yeah. that call twice. Yeah. And why? It's a mission statement. It's a mission, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, he didn't need any more money. No. We're going to pay him. We're going to have to pay him to keep him. Yeah. But he wants, I would suggest he wants he'll the end mission. Up, he'll end up making more with you anyway. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah it probably smells that too. You see, here, here's what he's saying. I mean, I'll say this. You won't say it. I'll say it. In this situation, he, A, doesn't need the money, but he's willing to take that cut, which is seemingly nuts to most people, nine out of 10 yeah. people. But he believes in the vision and the mission so much. I think he probably believes if this thing well, grows, not only that, and we do all these other say, opportunities didn't do anything for his heart. And that's what I'm and saying. So somebody, He's one of in. the guys, really pinned me down and said, "Tell me how you did it." <laughs> and I'm like, I, I, had, I bought him a burger. I mean, I don't, I don't know how I did it. What yeah. do you mean? Like, you looking for some trick? I didn't yeah. like do yeah. some sleazy yeah. manipulative thing. No mind thing. Jiu jitsu at all. But the only answer I had was, I guess I talked to his heart. Yeah. And the well, guy was exactly. the guy literally was like, "What's the point?" I didn't think about that. <laughs> no, not at all. We're human beings. Yeah, he wants to go where you're going. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, not only does he want to go there, he's going to take us there. Yes. He gets to lead. Yes. Hence, and again, I tell people this on my show, you do that, the money will take care of itself. No, it's fine. You got to do what you love. Yeah. That moves your heart. Hope you enjoyed that conversation. Again, StoryBrand, all things Donald Miller, great way to go is just go to StoryBrand, check them out online. Our Entree Leadership team, by the way, has come up with a great, great resource that fits into the conversation we just had. How to create core values. Now, obviously, Donald Miller gave us a great framework, tremendous context for using this resource from Entree Leadership. Specifically, there's five steps, 
for developing and communicating your company's guiding principles. So you're going to learn how to develop the right core values for your team and implement them. If you want to get it, text create core values. Now that's all one phrase, no spaces. Create core values. Text that to 33444. That's 33444. Or click on the link in the show notes. Well, it doesn't get any better than a real-life testimonial. It's one thing to talk about principles and some of the practical tips we give you every program. But Dave and Carrie Way, as I said at the top of the program, they had to deal with this and deal with it in a situation, a huge vacuum, if you will, where Dave's father, who's the heart and soul, the founder of the company, he passes away. What do you do next? Specifically around this conversation, here are Dave and Carrie. We were brand new business owners. His father had passed away. And so the team members, the whole atmosphere was like, they're a little bit afraid, right? The godfather has passed away and what happens now? So, and we were fearful. We had never done this before. And now our whole, where his dad was our net before, and he had done a great job of stepping back from the driver's seat, letting us drive and being there as just the safety net. So we always had him to go to and and ask, what do we do now? What do you think about this decision? Is this right? And he would smile and nod and reassure us. and, And it was wonderful. He was phenomenal. He was a phenomenal mentor and coach, and he he was gone. But we came back, and we tried to assess what really is our culture. Yes. And we had a culture at that time, but we needed to define it a little more, kind of like put flesh on the bones and figure out who are we. And that led us to creating a mission statement Mm -hmm and uh, coming up with what our core values are. And our core values were not aspirational at all. They really defined who we were already. That Mm -hmm. was already in our DNA, and we needed our team to know. So that coming into our culture, the core values that we initially came up with was four, Mm -hmm. and then we added three more, and the team's reception of those They agreed, and not that we were looking for agreement, but they came to us independently and said, these are things that we totally agree with this because that's who we already are. That's who you guys already are. That's who we want to be. That's the train, that's the bus that we want to be on. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we can believe in and live because we've already seen it practiced. Right. The biggest thing I noticed when everyone understood agreed with and adapted to the core values that we had, I didn't really see the impact right away outside of our organization. But what I saw inside our organization was that it gave kind of a new heightened sense of purpose and a wind in the sails. Like, we can do this. We can do this. Where before it was kind of like, "Eh, I don't know if we can do that. That's a big stretch. Now it was like, yeah, we can do this. And so at this time, we were negotiating with a giant customer to try to win some business from them. And they were demanding that we jump through all of these hoops and the goal would be changed every week. And it was just, it was laborious and painful. And messy. And messy. But our team, they really rose to the occasion. And here we are, this little tiny David of a corporation against, in a sense, this giant multi-billion dollar company. Goliath. They were a Goliath, and our team was meeting them toe-to-toe, and they were killing it. Our team was killing it. So they were coming. This big corporation was coming to the table unprepared, disorganized, disheveled, beaten down, pressure from their top, you know, to, and our team was coming to the table refreshed, invigorated, encouraged. It's like, bring it. We've got this. We know our product. We know who we are. We know what we can deliver, and it was, it was phenomenal. I want to say a special thanks to Dave and Carrie for sharing their story. We love when we can get some, you know, Main Street stories of people that have actually had to deal with some of these challenges that you're dealing with, and they came through them on the other side. So great stuff, Dave and Carrie. Appreciate you so much. 
Well, we love our friends at Belay and what they bring to you, our audience. Specifically, nine questions to ask when interviewing a virtual assistant. Now, let's just take the entire conversation we've had this program. Now, a lot of people want to have a mission statement. A lot of people would like to have core values. But the reality is, if, if you're afraid to admit it, don't be. A lot of you just feel like, I don't have time to get to that. I'm too busy being the chief everything officer. As my granddad used to say, you're busier than a one-armed wallpaper hanger. I mean, it's just crazy. So how can you help with all of the load? How about a virtual assistant? Our friends at Belay are going to help you assess where you're at. Nine questions to ask when interviewing a virtual assistant to make sure that you know that you've got the right one. So in this resource, Belay has compiled a list of nine questions to ask a candidate to help you get a jump start on your prep work so the interview does what it's supposed to do, and that's get you the right person to help you so that you can do more of what you need to be doing. Basically, only what you should be doing as the leader. So click on the link in our show notes to get this free resource, the Belay resource. Get it right now by clicking on the link in this episode's show notes. Well, that's going to do it on behalf of the entire Entree Leadership Team. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk with you again very soon. Hey, folks, I want to make you aware that we have other great podcasts from Ramsey Solutions. Here's a sample of The Ken Coleman Show. According to a recent Gallup poll, nearly 70% of Americans are disengaged at work. If you dread going into work every Monday morning and you're just trying to make it to the weekend, the Ken Coleman Show is for you. Everyone has a sweet spot. Your sweet spot is at the intersection of your greatest talent and greatest passion. We will help you discover what it is you were born to do and then we'll help you create a plan to make your dream job a reality. You matter and you have what it takes. Join the conversation on The Ken Coleman Show. To hear full episodes, just search Ken Coleman in iTunes or go to kencolemanshow.com.